Introduction We can explain ancient history as the collective events of past from the time when human history has been recorded stretching as far as post-classical era or the Middle Ages. The extent of recorded history is estimated to be around 5,000 years, which began with the Sumerian cuneiform script, which is the oldest ever writing to have been unearthed from the 30th century BC. Classical antiquity is normally used to denote the history in the olden days from the starting of recorded Greek history in 776 BC. This date also seems to overlap the actual founding of Rome, which is 753 BC, the beginning of archaic period in Greece and history of the Romans. The concluding date of the period is however disputed by historians. Some say that the period ended with the fall of Western Roman Empire in 476 AD, which is also the most accepted date while some say it ended in 565 AD with the death of Emperor Justinian I, the cessation of Platonic Academy, the rise of Shahnaman, and the coming of Islam. Ancient history of India includes the Middle Kingdoms, or Classical India, from the 3rd century BCE to 13th century BCE. This period saw the beginning of Satavahana dynasty and the fall of the Mauryan Empire. This age lasted for around 1,500 years and ended with the death of the Kola king, Rajendra Kola III, in 1279. India was in its highest bloom during this era when they had the largest economy in the world and held one-fourth of the world's wealth. Ancient history of China was marked with Shang dynasty in 1600 BC and ended with Qin dynasty. Chapter 1 Study of Ancient History Ancient history can be understood by two major sources, source texts and archaeologically. It has taken years of work and study to uncover these secrets of the ancient past. These books and excavations throw light upon the ancient way of life, work, food, study, science, art, technology, culture, and so many other things. There are still many secrets of these civilizations which need to be revealed. Archaeology The study of prehistoric man or human history by excavating sites and the study of the artifacts and other things revealed in these excavations is known as archaeology. It is an effort to restructure previous human behavior. There are many important excavations that have revealed some amazing civilizations and have uncovered some imperative discoveries, some of which are the excavations of Mohenjo-daro in Pakistan, Lothal in India and Harappa in Pakistan, the mausoleum of First Skin Emperor and the Terracotta Army in ancient China, the majestic pyramids of Egypt built in around 2600 BC, where the royalties of Egypt lay after their death. The study of the ancient city of Pompeii, a hidden Roman city which enlightens the historians about the cultures of Samnites and Etruscans. The city was preserved because of a volcanic eruption which covered it and kept it safe for today's historians to find. The discovery by Sir Arthur Evans and Minos Kalokarinos of Knossos. Knossos is a Greek reference for the city of Crete. There were many Roman coins found scattered in the fields which determined that the civilization was Roman. The discovery of the beautiful city of Troy by Heinrich Schliemann in 1868. Source text Excavations remains, and we can grab what we can, but writing are a proof of what actually happened, and most of the ancient history can be explained from the writings of the historians and authors from the past who lived during those times. Some of the important historians whose works are trusted are those of Arian, Herodotus, Thucydides, Polybius, Livy, Simacian, Tacitus, Sallust, Josephus, Suetonius, and Plutarch. The main difficulty which stands in the way of studying ancient history 
is that only a portion of the histories which have been recorded earlier have endured today. The dependability of the evidence that is got from these literary works has to be deliberated. None of the cultures boasted of literacy among the common class, and there were very less people who could write books. Ancient Greece was the first civilization to have a methodical way of knotting down all the events, and Herodotus of Halicarnassus was the first to start this. Thucydides largely eradicated heavenly casualty in his explanation of the battle between Sparta and Athens, instituting a rationalistic element which set an example for succeeding Western historical writings. He was also the first to differentiate between reason and instant roots of an occurrence. Rome was home to world's most erudite cultures, but numerous works, by many famous historians, are lost. For instance, a Roman historian by the name of Livy, who lived in the 31st century BC, penned down the history of the Roman Empire in 144 volumes, which he named Ab Urbe Cum Dicta, from the founding of the city. Most of these volumes were lost, only 35 were found, and have been kept safely, though there are small summaries of the lost volumes which still survive. Only a part of Roman history written down by the historians survives today. Chapter 2 Civilizations Southwest Asia Mesopotamia The early settlement of the alluvial plan of Mesopotamian civilization is known to start in the late 6th millennium BC, the Ubaid period through the 4th millennium in the Uruk period, the dynastic period till the rise of Babylon in the 2nd millennium. The economy created surplus food, which could be stored, and this helped the people to settle down in one place. Babylonia was a part of Lower Mesopotamia, and the city flourished under Hammurabi, who made an empire by merging Sumer and Akkadian later on became their official language, while they used Sumerian language for religious purposes. A tablet from the rule of Sarkon of Akkad, which dates back to 23rd century, is the earliest source in which the name of Babylon is mentioned. In spite of many searches, the main city of Akkad was never found. Ancient Persia The world's oldest civilization, Elam, situated in now southwest Iran, dates back to 3200 BC and continued to exist till 539 BC, according to the written sources. The official language of the civilization was Elamid. The first empire to have ruled over Greater Persia was the Archimanid Empire, followed by Median Empire. The Archimedian dynasty was the largest in territory among all the civilizations, had the high population and stretched over a vast 8 million square kilometers. The northeast of Iran, Parthia, was gaining power which was led by the Arsacid dynasty. They also ruled over Mesopotamia between 150 BC and 224 AD. Parthia was always in war with the Romans. The most influential empires of ancient Persia was the Sassanid Empire, which achieved the most achievements during its time. Their cultural influences was across borders from other civilizations in Africa, India, China and Western Europe, which led to creation of medieval art of Asia and Europe. Arabia There are not much sources of Arabia prior to the rise of Islam, the exploration in the Arabian Peninsula has not been much, and the written sources are restricted to coins and inscriptions from Arabia. The source of Arabian civilization is mostly known from sources of other civilizations like Greek, Persians, Romans, and Egyptians. The first written inscription dates back to 8th century, which mentions the kingdom of Hadhramut. Yadayo, the king of Hadhramut's name, was mentioned in an old Sabaic engraving, which was an external civilization reference. The main trade of the civilization was mir and frankincense, which was also one of the reasons why the civilization was connected to the Mediterranean world and East Africa. They also imported ivory from Africa and sold it to the Romans. Africa Egypt 
Egyptian civilization lasted very long and was located in northeast Africa. The civilization flourished beside the fertile Nile River, and the farthest stretch of their civilization is known to be in the second millennium BC, which is commonly referred as the New Kingdom period, from the Nile in the north to Jebel Barkat in south. The civilization ended in 30 BC when the Romans captured Ptolemaic Egypt. Egyptian civilization is one of the best cultures of the world. Home to famous pyramids, the city controlled and balanced the natural and human resources. They irrigated the Nile Valley, exploited the mineral in the nearby deserts, developed literature and writing system, organized trade with neighboring regions and a strong military system which controlled the lands and even the neighboring cultures. Nubia before the Egyptian civilization could begin, the Kushit state was formed in the area. The Kushit civilization is also known as Nubia, and they first rose in Sudan. They mention of Nubia is in Hebrew, Roman, Greek, and Egyptian texts, and has been referred to as Ethiopia in ancient records of Roman Greece. Many classical rites mention about how Nubia flourished during its time as it constituted most of Africa and some parts of Europe and Asia. The main gods of worship for the civilization were Amon and Isis. Like the Egyptians, the Kushites also built pyramids as the resting place for their kings. South Asia Indus Valley Civilization the dates for Indus Valley civilization have been marked from 3300 BC to 1700 BC. The territory flourished along the Indus and Gagarhakra rivers in Pakistan. The settlements connected to this civilization have been excavated in Afghanistan and India mostly. It is also known as the Harappan civilization when it was first excavated in Harappa, Punjab. The civilization was uncovered very recently in 1920s because of a rail construction which was happening in the area. The reason for the demise of this civilization is mainly because of the water which dried up forcing the residents to move. The civilization had advanced techniques of handicrafts like seal carving and carnelian products and metallurgy with tin, lead, bronze and copper. This civilization is famous for their planned cities and usage of baked bricks. They also had a fabulous drainage system, water supply system, and many buildings which were not used as residents. Mahajanapatas The beginning of this era is marked by the birth of Buddha and Mahavira in the 6th century BC. The ancient history of India is also referred to as the Golden Age, which has been mentioned in the Sanskrit literatures and began with 16 monarchies in 500 BC who were referred as Mahajanpadas. The land stretched from Afghanistan to Bangladesh across the Indo-Gangetic plains. Some of the biggest cities were Kosala, Magath, Gandhara and Kuru. The famous epics Mahabharata and Ramayana have their roots set in this period. Among all the Mahajanpadas, the most powerful and legendary kings of all times was Ashoka Maurya. During his rule, Chera, Kola and Pandya were ruling the south, whereas the Anuradhapura, now Sri Lanka's, was under the command of King Devanampiya Tissa. These kingdoms were in friendly terms with the Mauryan Empire to such an extent that Ashoka sent four monks, together called Arahat Mahinda and another novice to Anuradhapu. After listening to their ways, Devan Pia embraced Buddhism and encouraged his people to follow Buddhism too. The Satvahanas soon overthrew the Mauryan Empire after the death of the king Ashoka in 232 BC. Middle Kingdoms This period is also known as the Classical Age when Gupta Empire unified most of North India as one. It was founded by Sri Gupta and the empire was at its pinnacle in 320 CE. There was peace and order during his reign. The rulers encouraged art and science which led to many discoveries and inventions in astronomy, art, literature, technology, mathematics, religion and philosophy. 
There are many paintings, sculptures and architectures which are of great beauty belonging to this era. Many well-known scholars belong to era like Arabhata, Kalidasa, Vatsayana, Vishnu Sharma and Varaha Mihra, who advanced in various academic fields. The most noted rulers of the Gupta Empire were Chandragupta I and II and Samudragupta. The famous poet Kalidasa mentions how far the reigns of Guptas spread, 21 kingdoms in India and abroad, and included nations of Hunas, Cambodias and Parasikas. The official language of the people was Sanskrit, and the people residing in the northern part of the civilization were known as Prakrits. East Asia China the first written inscriptions found in the Chinese civilization date back to 13th century BC to the Shan dynasty. The written records have been found carved on animal bones and shells, also known as oracle bones. The findings prove that the Shan dynasty existed in two sets. First, or the earlier part, was between 1600 to 1300 BC, and the sources are from Zhengzhou, Shangcheng, and Erligang. The second part of the Shang period contains many oracle bone writings. The Zhu took over the Shang by the second millennium BC when they began to settle near the Yellow River. King Wu, the ruler of Zhu, with his brother Duke of Zhu, defeated the Shang in the Battle of Muye. In the 8th century, many military leaders wished to gain control and there were many other people like Guan Rong who started invading from the northwest forcing Zhu to move their capital to Luoyang. This period is referred to as the spring and autumn after the scroll called Annals, which have important records of birth, deaths, important ceremonies, which took place in Lu. Zhu flourished in the eastern part, and many philosophical schools came up, which gave birth to important movements like Taoism, Confucianism, Moism, and Legalism. By the end of 5th century BC, only seven important states survived. These few states always fought with each other, hence the name given was Warring States Period. Although there was a Zhu king in the 256 BC, he was simply a king for name and had very less power. Japan The Book of the Later Han is a Chinese book which first mention about Japanese people from beyond the oceans of Luoyang, people of Wa. According to an old chronicle of Japan, Kojiki, in 660 BC, it was Emperor Jimu who brought together many tribes of Japan under one rule and brought order to the nation. The Book of Wei from the 3rd century writes that around 30 small states and tribes were united and ruled by a shaman queen, Himiko. The Chinese travellers to Kyushu claim that the Han and Wei dynasty were descendants of Grand Count of the Wu. They have physically described their looks and said they had tattoos, braided hair and women who wore a single-piece clothing. Korea According to the many folklores and the Samguk Yusa, or memorabilia of the Three Kingdoms, the first Korean kingdom was Gojuseon. The founder of the kingdom was Dangun, who was foretold to be a lord of heaven and have founded Gojuseon in 2333 BC, after which it was ruled by Jisi. The book Shiji, also known as the Records of the Grand Historian, says that Korea was founded in 197 BC by women from China. Han Dynasty of China ruined Korea and ruled it for 400 years starting 105 BC. Later on, the three kingdoms Silla, Goguryeo and Bakche captured Gojuseon and ruled the Manchuria Peninsula. Bakche and Goguryeo began the most powerful out of the three failed many Chinese invasions. Vietnam. Back in 3000 BC, 15 La Vie traditional tribes joined hands under the leadership of Van Nang and formed one dynasty by the name of Hong Bang to fight enemies, control floods and exchange cultures and trades. Another civilization which flourished by the Red River in north of Vietnam, Delta, was the Dong Song culture. 
archaeological discoveries in Thailand have lately proved that bronze culture began in Vietnam and not in China, as they claim. Mongols When Xion Nu established empire in the 3rd century BC, it marked the beginning of Mongolia. Xion Nu was founded by two men who was later on succeeded by his son, Modu Shan Nu, who conquered and united many tribes under his flag. Xion Nu stretched from Lake Baikou in the north to Great Wall in the south and from Greater Qinghan Mountains in the east to Tian Shan Mountains in the west. Hans There have been no records left by the Hans. The only mention about them is in 151 when northern Xion Nu was overpowered by the Chinese at the lake of Barco and they moved to western steppe at Kangju. Chinese records of 2nd and 4th centuries show that a small group of people thrived on the fragments of Xiongnu was scattered all over the steppe of Kazakhstan. The records mention the name of the tribe as Yueben. Americas Andean Civilization The Central Andes in South America has the longest every flourished civilization for 4500, which started from North Chico to the Incas. The Norte Chico flourished beside the rivers of Pativilca, Supe, and Fortaleza. The Incas started their rule under Manco Capac and was the biggest empire in the pre-Columbian America. The main city was Cusco, which was the center of all important things like political, military, and administration. The Incas used conquests and peaceful ways to join South America into one. Their official language was Quechua, although there were many local dialects too. Mesoamerica The main Mesoamerican civilizations include Mayans and Olmecs. There were many cultures which rose between 2000 BC and 300 BC, like the Aztec, Mixtec, Maya, Izapa, Olmec, Teotihuacan, Purepeca and Toltec. These civilizations lasted for 4,000 years before they came in touch with the Europeans. These civilizations were highly developed in astronomy, medicine, mathematics, theology and pyramid temples. The Monte Alban was the city of Zapotec. Although the Olmecs, after them, took the writings of Zapotec, the Olmecs have been credited to be the first civilization to have developed a writing system. Mayan inscriptions date back to 3rd century BC and have been found in San Bartolo, Guatemala. Europe Etruria The Etruscans developed in Italy in 800 BC. Their history can be tracked exactly from the artefacts and the burial sites. Etruscan was a culture which developed from the tribe of Villanovan people in Etruria of central Italy in the 7th century BC. There are many evidences found on burial tombs which look similar to the Euboean Greek. There are more than 7,000 inscriptions which have been found that reveal about how the civilization promoted aristocratic city-state that had centralized power, maintained law and order across the cities. Construction of public-related works like roads, towns, irrigation system and defence system of the town has also been mentioned in the inscriptions. Greece The history of Greece is considered to be the foundation of Western civilization by many historians. The Greek civilization lasted till the rise of Christianity. There are evidences of usage of tools more than 100,000 years ago, but the earliest settlements have been considered to be 9,000 years on the island of Crete. The Minoan civilization has been known to exist in Crete around 3600 BC. In 1600 BC, Mycenaean civilization overpowered the Minoans, which led to a period known as Greek Dark Ages, and lasted till 1600 BC. The archaic period witnessed the growth of Greek and this era also saw the fall of old royalties as there was a lot of reforms in Athens and a new constitution was formed in Sparta. Athens rose when Achaic fell to become a leading power in the classical period. After the Battle of Corinth, the Greeks came under the rule of Romans in 146 BC. 
Greece continued to be ruled by the Romans until the fall of Byzantine. Rome Roman civilization grew out to a handful of agriculturists in the 9th century BC, originated on the Italian peninsula. Romans witnessed a shift of monarchs to oligarchic public to an autocratic empire. Many cultures of Rome were inspired from Greece. The Western world had great contributions from Rome in the fields of art, literature, war, language and architecture. Many houses, villas and monuments have been excavated in the cities of Rome. The monuments had fountains with bath complexes, gymnasiums, theatres, which were all supplied by drinking water connected through miles of aqueducts. Many monuments also had shops, libraries, marketplaces and sewers too. Many Western kingdoms like Italy, Gaul, Hispania, etc. broke from the Roman Empire to form individual kingdoms towards the 5th century, which was one of the causes of the fall of Roman Empire. The eastern part of what was left of Rome was then known as the Byzantine Empire. Germanic Tribes The Germanic tribes were people of northern European origin. They moved to Britain, which is present southern Scandinavia and northern Germany in 5th century. The initial people have been classified into three tribes according to the Bede's Historia Ecclesiastic agent Isenglorum Saxons, Angles and Jutes, and the historians think there might be Franks and Frisians included in them as well. Bede was an English monk and renowned scholar and author, and this book earned him the title of the Father of English History. The Anglo-Saxon Chronicle also mentions the movement of these tribes to Britain. The Anglo-Saxon word is used for the people who live towards the southeast of Great Britain. In the later Iron Age, Celts had become famous and had expanded their lands as far as Scotland in the north, Galatia in the east, and Iberian Peninsula and Ireland in the west. In the beginning of the AD, when the Roman Empire expanded and the migration of Germanics, the Celtics, became limited to British Isles, and by the first millennium AD, the Celtic languages died out. Chapter 3. Developments Religion and Philosophy Ancient history witnesses many new religion and philosophies all over the world, especially in the 6th century BC. Some of the initial and significant ones were Zoroastrianism in Persia and Hinduism, Jainism and Buddhism in India. The Abrahamic religions, Judaism, Christianity, Islam, Iranian, East Asian religions, come under Abrahamic religions, who follow the common head Abraham, trace their origins to around 1800 BC. The Egyptians worshipped many deities who they believed controlled natural elements. The main gods changed with time. They worshipped Amun, the creator, Isis, the mother goddess, Ra, the sun god, and others. Romans believed that their cities were founded by gods and priesthoods could be kept only by the leading class. They had many gods of which Jupiter was considered to be the most powerful. Like the Romans, the Greeks too had many gods and goddesses like Zeus, Apollo, Hades, Poseidon, Aphrodite, Athena, Hera, Artemis, Dionysus, Ares, Hermes, Hestia and Hephaestus. The Indian philosophy has been said to be a union of two traditions, Vedic and Sramana. The Vedas are where the Indian philosophy begins, where there are questions connected to origin of the universe, laws of nature and place of man. Buddhism and Jainism are extensions of Sramana way of thinking. The Sramanas were pessimist and created a world where they saw the suffering and sorrows and supported a life full of hardships. They followed the concepts of Ahimsa, Jnana, Karma, Samsara and Moksha. The relation between the Iranian Avesta and Indian Vedas are categorized by the difference in their ways of insinuation for a person's place in the society. The three main philosophies which dominated Chinese thinking in the East were Confucianism, Taoism and Legalism. 
Confucianism was accepted by many and looked for administrative ethics, not by forcing law on someone, but by example and power of ethnicities. The philosophy spread far and wide right to Goguryeo and Korean Peninsula and also towards Japan. Aristotle, Socrates and Plato were the main philosophers in the West, which was later on suppressed by the conquests of Alexander the Great in Middle East and Europe in the 4th century. Once Bronze and Iron Age ended in the 4th century BC, Christianity was the new religion which was embraced by the people and it also marked the end of the Greek philosophy. Science and Technology the technological advances of the ancient history are foundations to many of the ways we follow in modern technology. Mesopotamians were the first people to use bronze and later on copper, gold and iron too. They used the metals to decorate the palace and make weapons also. Archimedes has been credited to design the first pump in this era, which was used to water Nineveh and hanging gardens of Babylon in the 7th century. The most significant progress made on the Mesopotamian civilization was done by the Sumerian who invented writing and the first biggest piece of literature known as the Epic of Gilgamesh was found in the code of Hammurabi. The archaeologists have not quite found when the wheel was first invented, but the oldest one belongs to the Mesopotamians. The Sumerians used it in pottery and chariots between 3500 BC and 3200 BC. Mesopotamians used number 60 as their base and divided time in 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds make a minute, which we are still using. They were highly advanced in mathematics and were well versed with addition, multiplication, subtraction, division, fractions, quadratic and cubic equations and also divided the circle in 360 degrees. There are many evidences which show that they knew the Pythagorean theorem even before Pythagoras wrote it. Babylonians were good with the planets and their movements and also created the first Mesopotamian calendar by studying them. This civilization irrigated their fields and even wove wool from cloth. Africans were the first who used iron in making tools. Most of the pyramids of Nubia, Egypt and North Africa have a lot of iron technology used in them. Egyptians progressed by making many simple machines and they were the first among the civilizations to make a map which could be recognized. They also mined gold in large scale using fire setting technique. They also made paper and pottery which was vastly used in trade. They also made ships and lighthouses for trading. India saw progress in fields of mathematics and astronomy mostly, though there were other developments in fields of meteorology, hydrology and sewage system. The Indus Valley civilization was a planned city with public baths, closed drainage system and community granaries. The Taxila University attracted scholars from various parts of Asia. The university was staff comprised of many famous scholars like Panini, Vishnu Sharma, Jivaka and Kautilya. A panel found at the excavation site of Mohenjo-Daro shows that they were also into shipbuilding and sources from Yukti Kalpataru script confirms it. The Vastu Shastra from the ancient history is a guide to understanding materials, sanitation, hydrology, etc. Vastu is broadly used in many Indian homes now also. They also had developed vegetable dyeing and usage of perfumes shows they also had the knowledge of chemistry, especially the purification and distillation process. Chinese developments include matches, seismological detectors, iron plough, suspension bridge, natural gas as fuel, propeller, crossbow, gunpowder, magnetic compass, cast iron, spinning wheel and many more. Before black powder could be invented, fuel for rocket, the Chinese had invented solid fuel rocket in 1150 AD. The Romans had an advanced technique of farming, road building, civil and marine engineering and spinning and weaving. There were many machines which helped them ease their work, like the Gallic Reaper. They were also the first to have hydraulic mining and which is why they built many fountains and other waterworks across their cities.
Romans had many monuments, dams, harbours, vaults and domes built in numbers throughout the empire. They built their city with special sand, which had crystalline grains, which is why their kingdom remains preserved till today. Maritime Activity Almost all the civilizations had to trade overseas and built ships to travel across the oceans and conquer more land and cities. The earliest boats which could travel in the seas might have been built more than 45,000 years ago, as per a hypothesis which explains the occupancy of Australia. People used boats primarily to travel and for food. Hunting whales have been dated far back when they used to drive the whale to the shore using small weapons or noise in many small boats and kill the animal once it was near the shore. The first ever known civilization to have used ships were the Indians of the Mauryan Empire in the 4th century BC. Greek historian Herodotus mentions about King Necho II sending an expedition of Phoenicians who sailed from the Red Sea all the way round Africa to Nile. They had a lot of cargoes and traded goods. They were famously known as traders in purple. The purple dye came from the murex snail, which they used for clothes and other things, and had a monopoly over it. Hanu, an Egyptian explorer, was the first explorer who seemed to have first recorded his explorations in stone. He sailed as far as Punt and what is now called Somalia and Ethiopia. He journeyed back to Egypt, bringing back myrrh, wood, treasures and metal. Warfare the ancient warfare is wars which have taken place from when history was recorded till the ancient period. In Europe and East, the end of ancient times is normally calculated with the fall of Rome in 476, the wars of the Eastern Roman Empire on its North African borders and Southwestern Asia, and the commencement of the Muslim takeovers in the 7th century. For China, the initiation of Tan Dynasty in 618 and the increasing role of warriors to always have to encounter threat from north could also mark as the end of ancient times. The decline of Gupta Empire and the Muslim conquests mark the line for Indian ancient period and for Japan it can be taken as the end of feudalism in the 12th century. The progress of kingdoms, states and empires led to growth in weapons and warfare. Starting with Mesopotamia, the civilization produced surplus grains. Most of the people in military were farmers and the people community could afford them to go for a campaign easily then help them working throughout the year. This made them have first organized armies of all civilization. The armies grew with time and became highly federal. The armies mainly used spears and bows. They were same type of weapons used by prehistoric humans while they went hunting. Armies of China and Egypt also had the same type of weapons for their foot soldiers. Since saddle was not yet developed, so infantry was the most sought way for war. The soldiers were categorized into shock and ranged. The shock group of soldiers would either hold their line or penetrate the enemy line. These forces would preferably be joined, therefore leaving your enemy in an impasse. Spread them out and make them susceptible to shock or cluster your forces and leave them susceptible to ranged. This steadiness was ultimately altered as expertise allowed for cavalry, chariots and artillery to play an important role on the battlefields. Artwork and Music most of the civilizations had the culture of worshipping many gods. There are many works of art which have been uncovered. The Egyptians used simple and clear lines to form simple shapes. Symbols were an important part of the Egyptian culture and had special colours assigned for certain things like yellow was for sun god, red was for energy and authority, while blue and green represented Nile and life. Sumerians were famous for pottery and cedar oil paints. The most amazing artefact which has been unearthed is standard of Ur, which is a beautiful wooden box decorated with lapis lazuli and shells. It shows kings accepting prisoners from soldiers. Babylon was famous for clay bricks and enameled tiles and frescoes. 
they had also perfected the art of embroidery, tapestries and rugs. Like Sumerians, Minerns were also masters in frescoes, and besides stone, carvings and landscapes were their best skills as well. Minones were skilled at making masks and pendants of gold. The Greek are famous of their standing sculptures known as the Contraposto. The most precious work of the Greeks was the panel painting, which died soon as it was not encouraged. The Ajanta Caves and Elora Caves are the expertise of Indian sculptures, which has paintings and sculptures dedicated to Buddhism. The most famous work of China, which remains intact, is the army of terracotta warriors, which was found in the tomb of Qishi Huang, who was the first king of the Qing dynasty. There are several representations of harps and flutes, which can be seen on the tomb paintings of Egypt. The Sufi Dihir rituals are the nearest music known to Egyptian music. There were four harps discovered in pieces while excavating the city of Ur and have been dated back to 2750 BCE. Many say that they could be lures instead of harps, and the most well-known is the bull-headed harp which is in Baghdad. Flutes with seven holes have been unearthed in Indus Valley civilization, and the Samveda consists of many hymns and poems. Natya Shastra is an important source of music and dance in ancient India. The Chinese king has a history which dates back to 5,000 years. There are many legends which mention kin, yet the actual time of discovery of the instrument cannot be found. Greece was not much interested in music, however, tale of Homer was sung with instruments. There are texts of music which have been found to contain hymns of Mesomedes of Crete. Boethius, a philosopher and a theorist, was also one of the best musicians known in Rome. He also wrote the principles of music and quadrivium for people to have a good understanding of consonance and dissonance in music. of the evidence that is got from these literary works has to be deliberated. None of the cultures boasted of literacy among the common class and there were very less people who could write books. Ancient Greece was the first civilization to have a methodical way of knotting down all the events and Herodotus of Halicarnassus was the first to start this. Thucydides largely eradicated heavenly causality in his explanation of the battle between Sparta and Athens, instituting a rationalistic element which set an example for succeeding Western historical writings. He was also the first to differentiate between reason and instant roots of an occurrence. Rome was home to world's most erudite cultures, but numerous works by many famous historians are lost. For instance, a Roman historian by the name of Livy, who lived in the 31st century BC, penned down the history of the Roman Empire in 144 volumes, which he named Ab Urbe Cum Dicta, from the founding of the city, option which covered it and kept it safe for today's historians to find. The discovery by Sir Arthur Evans and Minos Kalokarinos of Knossos Knossos is a Greek reference for the city of Crete. There were many Roman coins found scattered in the fields which determined that the civilization was Roman. The discovery of the beautiful city of Troy by Heinrich Schliemann in 1868. Source text. Excavations remains and we can grab what we can but writing are a proof of what actually happened and most of the ancient history can be explained from the writings of the historians and authors from the past who lived during those times. Some of the important historians whose works are trusted are those of Arian, Herodotus, Thucydides, Polybius, Livy, Simachian, Tacitus, Sallust, Josephus, Suetonius and Plutarch. The main difficulty which stands in the way of studying ancient history is that only a portion of the histories which have been recorded earlier have endured today. The dependable study, science, art, technology, culture and so many other things.
there are still many secrets of these civilizations which need to be revealed. Archaeology The study of prehistoric man or human history by excavating sites and the study of the artifacts and other things revealed in these excavations is known as archaeology. It is an effort to restructure previous human behavior. There are many important excavations that have revealed some amazing civilizations and have uncovered some imperative discoveries, some of which are the excavations of Mohenjo-Daro in Pakistan, Lothal in India and Harappa in Pakistan, the mausoleum of First Skin Emperor and the Terracotta Army in ancient China, the majestic pyramids of Egypt built in around 2600 BC, where the royalties of Egypt lay after their death. The study of the ancient city of Pompeii, a hidden Roman city which enlightens the historians about the cultures of Samnites and Etruscans. The city was preserved because of a volcanic erupt, the rise of Charlemagne, and the coming of Islam. Ancient history of India includes the Middle Kingdoms, or Classical India, from the 3rd century BCE to 13th century BCE. This period saw the beginning of Satavahana dynasty and the fall of the Mauryan Empire. This age lasted for around 1500 years and ended with the death of the Kola king, Rajendra Kola III, in 1279. India was in its highest bloom during this era when they had the largest economy in the world and held one-fourth of the world's wealth. Ancient history of China was marked with Shang Dynasty in 1600 BC and ended with Qin Dynasty. Chapter 1 Study of Ancient History Ancient history can be understood by two major sources, source texts and archaeologically. It has taken years of work and study to uncover these secrets of the ancient past. These books and excavations throw light upon the ancient way of life, work, food. Introduction We can explain ancient history as the collective events of past from the time when human history has been recorded stretching as far as post-classical era or the Middle Ages. The extent of recorded history is estimated to be around 5,000 years, which began with the Sumerian cuneiform script, which is the oldest ever writing to have been unearthed from the 30th century BC. Classical antiquity is normally used to denote the history in the olden days from the starting of recorded Greek history in 776 BC. This date also seems to overlap the actual founding of Rome, which is 753 BC, the beginning of archaic period in Greece and history of the Romans. The concluding date of the period is however disputed by historians. Some say that the period ended with the fall of Western Roman Empire in 476 AD, which is also the most accepted date while some say it ended in 565 AD with the death of Emperor Justinian I, the cessation of Platonic Academy 